discuss condoms. I mean, those are really were sort of uh, very unique things at that time. I mean, what led you to publish that report? Well, n necessity. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What really stimulated to do it was, I didn't have any money. See, the Surgeon General has no budget. But France um, was putting out some kind of uh, propaganda to the people of their country. And then I said, if they can do it, we can do it. And as soon as I published that report you're talking about, mm -hmm. France copied a big piece of oh, it, really? and Australia copied a big piece mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And I said to the, I went to Congress and I said, it's ridiculous for something that your Surgeon General wrote is being copied and used to prevent a disease that we know more about, but we haven't got enough money to tell the people about it. Well, I got money, oh. you know, hand over fist from then on. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, it, it was used well, and that report you're talking about um, is just as true today mm -hmm. as when mm -hmm. we wrote it, except for the dosage of drugs. Yeah, right. Yeah, a lot of that still remains true, and I think it illustrates that that uh, there's no particular newer ways of transmission that people thought about. No. That, and it's well, very they, strong. They, in, they thought about it. Well, yeah, of course, you're right. But, but I'm not sure. I want to yeah. tell you another thing. Uh, we're criticized so many times that we didn't move faster. Hmm. Every time anybody sent an idea, no matter how cockamamie it was, we tested it. And that's mm -hmm. all to the credit of Dr. Tony Fauci. Mm -hmm. If somebody sure. wrote in and says, if you take beeswax and you roll it in flour and put it on your screen, <laughs> it'll keep, them all, keep, keep the disease out, we would try it. Wow, so you tested it. And that. say, right. it doesn't work. Wow. And yeah. so, you know, we got rid of mosquitoes mm -hmm. and bed sure. bugs, mm -hmm. all sorts of other things. Yeah. But um, the, one, the one voice that you could understand and that you could count on being truthful and not lying about it was the voice of the Surgeon General. You're right. And certainly, you know, all of us are very, play, are very proud and pleased that you did that. And I think it really set the tone for what the Office of the Surgeon General could do. It did. Really. And then, you know, after that, you came out with this pamphlet called Understanding AIDS. And, you know, that was sent to every American household. It was really the government's first and I guess only attempt to reach every citizen of, of this country. It, it was. What was the mood of the country? or the mood of the administration before you ma mailed that out? I mean, were people anxious or were they worried? Well, uh, France again had sent something and I said, if a country like France mm -hmm. that doesn't have nearly the resources we have, nor the experience clinically, nor the experience with research mm -hmm. can do this for their country, we look like pikers doing nothing about it. And I said, we should notify every single household in this country so no one can say, I didn't know. And that's how it came about. And uh, it was a big uh, uh, thing you unfolded. Right. And uh, yeah. um, it also is still, everything in it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, so after it was published, where was there any sort of fallout from that or anything, negative things? Or how did that, elbow, how did that change your, your role as Surgeon General in any way? Um, well, it made the role of Surgeon General uh, much more prominent. Mm -hmm. uh, it also uh, started a spate of very funny cartoons. <laughs> the, the country was flooded with cartoons sure, right, about yes, the right, Surgeon General's right, port, right. you know. Um, one of them I remember was a rural mailbox, and uh, the lady of the house was lying uh, prone in the streets and said, the Surgeon General must have sent another letter. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah. um, th those cartoons uh, played their role. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of them, because I have 101 of them, so there must have been a bunch. Yeah. 
But I think to do these reports, you know, and particularly this understanding age, that's one of the things that you're most known for. And I think it took a lot of courage for you. So, and it may not have had that much really support among your colleagues. Where did you get your strength uh, to do the, these kinds of things? Well, it, you know, I, I was raised, if you're going to do anything, do it right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it's, it's, it's that simple. Be honest, and if you're going to do anything, do it right. You keep you out of trouble. If we were, if we had that going in our government today, boy, we'd be way ahead. Some people have called you the first celebrity Surgeon General. Did you remember that? I mean, do you consider yourself a celebrity Surgeon General? Uh, did that make your job more easy, or did it make it more difficult? I don't consider myself a celebrity, um, but uh, the publicity that uh, sort of hung by these various reports you're talking about made me a very popular speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sometimes I gave four lectures in four different cities on AIDS in the same day. And uh, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed more than anything the question and answer periods because that was the time I find what the public had incorrectly believed and I could correct it before hundreds or thousands of people. And uh, uh, if you have to be a celebrity in order to get that done, uh, I take that. I certainly don't, uh, never sought the role sure. of a celebrity and I, I never thought of myself as a celebrity surgeon general, and uh, uh, but there's no doubt about the fact that nothing succeeds like success. Sure. And right. if you have uh, a couple reports like that, and uh, you re remember the first report that you mentioned was requested in person by President uh, uh, Reagan. Mm -hmm. So that put a stamp of approval sure. and authority on it. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it was very funny that uh, you wouldn't believe how many people in the United States government thought that they ought to sign it. So there is a desire, I would say, among other government people mm -hmm. to assume the celebrity role of the Surgeon General. Sure. And uh, uh, one of the best people we ever had in government was uh, the, uh, the man who was Secretary of HHS, HS, HHS at that time. And uh, uh, was a family practitioner who became three times governor of uh, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, he said to this huge group of people who thought they should sign it, he said, you know, when I was a country doctor and I got a consultation from an expert and I didn't take it, I was a fool. <laughs> he said, so I've had some focus groups. And I said, who would you like to receive this message from? Mm -hmm. And he said, it may surprise you that every one of them said they'd like to hear it from the Surgeon General. Mm -hmm. So he said, Chick, you are signing this thing. And I said, well, you know, Dr. Bowen, I think that the buck stops on your yeah, desk, right. and You're I right. think you ought to sign it. Mm -hmm. And I said, you've been so supportive in mm -hmm. getting all these things done, we couldn't have done them without you. He said, I've heard my people, they have said Coop should sign it, Coop's going to sign it. So that's how I got to sign it. Oh, that's great. That's a very, very nice story, a very interesting one, particularly, yeah. you know, that he's a former governor of the state where the Rural Center for AIDS STD Prevention yep. is housed, and, and uh, you know, he's, he still attends some events. So thanks for sharing that story. So as you look back, Dr. Coop, on your career, especially your work in the AIDS prevention area. What are your thoughts 
And what would you like to be most remembered about in your work to prevent HIV AIDS? Well, I'll, I'll give you the answer I gave somebody else to that same question. Um, I, I, I enjoyed a very unusual relationship with lots of people. One of them was the press. And the press gave me a farewell party when I retired. That's pretty much unheard of. And uh, one of the senior members of the press corps said, Dr. Coop, how would you like to be remembered? And I said, I would like to be remembered by you in such a way that maybe 10 years from now you write about me and you say, you know, even after he left office, he was the health conscience of America. And that's what I tried to be. Thank you, Dr. Coop, for your insights. It has been a great interview. I really appreciate uh, you providing the information about what happened when you were Surgeon General. Thanks for all that you did. Certainly, we're all appreciative. And congratulations on the award. Thank you, sir.